I want you to name Beethoven's most difficult piano sonatas. What comes to mind right away? I'm guessing most of you are thinking immediately Hammerclaff here, Opus 106. And rightfully so, it probably is the hardest one. Also the last three sonatas, Opus 109, 110, and 111. But the one we're gonna talk about today I want to really focus on because it's kind of sneaky difficult. It's not until people have played it that people kind of realize how hard it is. In fact, I personally knew a guy who played all 32 and had performed and recorded all 32 sonatas. Actually, I think he was in the process of recording all 32. He was almost done recording all 32 sonatas. And when they ask what's the most difficult one, he said one, we're all like, right. Then he said, oh, we're like, right. And we all thought he was gonna say six. He said 101. But what makes this piece so difficult, but also so incredible? Well. That's what I'm going to show you in the video today. Now, funny enough, this being one of the most difficult piano sonatas, it actually starts pretty easy. They're talking about pretty easy technically, not necessarily musically, but it starts off not too hard to play. In fact, the first movement makes my list of one of the easiest movements to play. If you have a student who's maybe pretty musical, but isn't very technically advanced yet, it's one of the easiest movements of sonata to jump into, which is funny because this becomes one of the hardest sonatas by the end, but it starts out so simple. Even though this movement is pretty easy technically to play the notes and the rhythms to, it's one of the reasons this sonata is so hard because not only does it have the challenging fast stuff later, it's just this is a hard movement to pull off. People play this movement and they kind of think, what? That was a weird three pages of Beethoven. It didn't like punch you in the face at the beginning. And in fact, most of it is kind of quiet and more subdued and introspective. So it's hard to pull off this piece for an audience where they're not like, you know, checked out from the very beginning. But as you can tell, once you do kind of figure out what's going on musically, it is an incredibly beautiful piece of music. I think one of the things that I love, I love about this piece, it makes me happy to hear, I love, love playing this, love hearing it, is it's definitely later on in Beethoven where we're, we're writing romantic music at this point. That's why we kind of say, you probably heard me say if you watch the channel before, Beethoven's like a transitional figure. It takes it from the classical to the romantic. This is definitely on the romantic side of stuff. But we still get the brilliance of Beethoven and like the development of themes. But we also get clever things like silence at times where there's like one little part by itself. It's not just like hold the pedal down, make it all ooey gooey romantic. First of all, that's clever. I have melody. Not melody, melody, melody. Kind of embed it like um, offbeat har harmony there. But then after that, it goes away and you get this little, while well, the left hand makes no noise at all like this. Like, Where'd it go? And then. Happens again. And then how do you bring the left hand back in? Well, the melody goes to the right hand and you play this very low, deep F sharp down there. Okay, so that first movement really brings out whether or not you are a good enough musician to play this piece. But the second movement is hard to play and weird. Like I haven't studied this movement really much for like, when I, I played this piece about 10 years ago, and I haven't studied it much since then, this movement. I played the first movement more. I messed around more this the, the last movement still, but I think it's still fun to play in the intro to the last movement. But this movement, I'm just like, I kind of performed it and didn't really touch it much more because it's, it's weird. I'm gonna butcher it real quick for you just so you can get a sense of how this goes. Uh, That's the chord. You think it's wrong, but it's not. Maybe I'll just find a recording of someone else doing it. This 
in your face march with tons of crunchy weird notes just seems really out of place okay then we get the third movement which is kind of like an intro to the last movement but it goes like this So like the fast march I just played, this movement's also weird, but it's weird in a cooler way, I think, like weird in a dark, mysterious way. And really, it doesn't get any more clear. It just stays weird. Notes actually get a little more bizarre as we go along. And then this is, like I said, it's a third movement. Some people say it's a third movement. Some people say it's just an intro to the last movement. Either way, there is a movement after this that serves as an intro too. So this is how this movement ends. Isn't that gorgeous? So Beethoven brings back the first thing we heard at the very beginning of this whole sonata, the first thing in the first movement, which is, again, a very, um, what we're going to see a lot in the Romantic era, kind of like calls forward to what's going to happen a lot in the Romantic era, these sonatas that are more cyclical, one giant drama. So how does he end this intro to the last movement? Before we play the last movement, we're going to remember the first movement. But guess what? I haven't even showed you the hardest part of the piece yet. So if you've had the patience to make it to this point in the video, you are going to be greatly rewarded because the most difficult thing is just about to happen. So yes, you have to play that beautiful first movement, play this really weird kind of out of place chromatic waltz that just like, not waltz, but march. It's really odd second movement. This long, slow intro, third movement kind of thing. Then you get to this fourth movement, which I just showed you. It's really hard, especially it's hard if it's not memorized with all the skips and everything. But then Beethoven writes a fugue. And this is what Beethoven does sometimes in his late sonatas that make them just skip up in difficulty. I'm going to play a little bit for you anyway because I know I'm going to fake it and miss notes. So I just want you to experience this. You've had this huge, loud buildup. You play this basically entire flashy movement, and then this happens. Not fugue yet. Not fugue yet. Fugue time. It's probably the sneakiest, difficult sonata. Again, the other sonatas, Hammer Clavier, the last three, I think we can kind of bunch together in our brain. It's like, oh yeah, the last three, everyone knows they're hard. Uh, Waldstein and Appassionata are just so famous. They're famously difficult. I think this one here just flies under the radar a little bit. If you're not an avid, avid Beethoven fan who knows the sonatas, you might be kind of like me. Like when I jumped in the sonata, I'm like, I don't know, Beethoven Opus 101, it's really pretty. I played it because I thought it was really pretty, not even quite knowing how hard it was going to be. I can remember specifically the first time I heard this piece, just falling in love with it. I listened to it over and over and over again for multiple days in a row because I thought this is one of the most amazing, amazing pieces. I had no clue at the time when I fell in love with this piece that it was so hard to play. I just fell in love with the sound of it. It's one of the most cohesive Beethoven sonatas. It's about 20 minutes. Each movement, It's not they're not all five minutes, but they're roughly five minutes a piece, so it's very balanced. It doesn't have like a huge 10 minute, 15 minute first movement and like, you know, a three minute waltz here, then another 10 minute chunk here. But it feels a little more like one giant drama. So I would highly recommend 
go listen to this piece after this video. Go listen to it. I mean, unless you want to watch more videos by me, you know, feel free to click on some of the ones over there. That would be awesome. Um, but if you're not going to listen to more, more videos by me, then go listen to some Beethoven Opus 101. I hope it becomes one of your new favorite sonatas because it's definitely one of my favorite Beethoven sonatas.